have to do is rip the boreal forest, strip mine the land, pump tons and tons of water, boil it all up with secret chemicals, produce three times the greenhouse gas emissions, add in the 70 square miles of toxic tailing ponds, and get the stuff to market. Here's the issue. TransCanada operates the pipelines, but it contracts out the construction. The U.S. capital is virtually shouting distance from the Canadian Embassy, so there was symbolism in Canada's Environment Minister coming here to announce something he wants Americans to hear. <laughs> ah, yes, we're back again to jump right into Christy Clark's and Stephen Harper's nightmare. We're here to talk about oil. <laughs> and we're also here to give the Koch brothers a Coke ache. Oh, my goodness. I'm talking about two brothers that are billionaires on the wrong side of history. We're on the right side. I'm Darren Howard. I'm Robert Nisbet. And I'm Monica Solmark. Thank you very much for joining us and reminding you that activism is winning, fascism is losing. Why? Because we got guys like Mark Fiore. Check it out. Hello, America. And by America, I mean North America. I'm Tar Sands Timmy, your friend from Alberta, Canada, here to tell you everything is coming up crude. Or bitumen, whatever. I'm the crudest crude there is. <laughs> but I'm your ticket to energy independence. Uh, really? All we have to do is... Rip the boreal forest, strip mine the land, pump tons and tons of water, boil it all up with secret chemicals, produce three times the greenhouse gas emissions, add in the 70 square miles of toxic tailing ponds, and... <sighs> get the stuff to market. Simple, eh? It's the getting the stuff to market part where you United Statesians come in. I need a pipeline. And the Enviro hippies on the west and east coasts won't have it. So I'm headed south. The Keystone XL pipeline will get Tar Sands Timmy all the way down to Port Arthur, Texas, where there happens to be oil tankers aplenty. But don't worry, all this oil is for you, not for export. Promise. Never mind the tankers. All we need to do to make this pipeline happen is convince President Obama and John Kerry, which is why my oily Alberta friends are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on lobbyists who happen to have worked on the Obama and Kerry campaigns. See, this isn't about oil company profits. I'm just trying to bring jobs to the United States. Jobs in the hundreds of thousands, the thousands, the hundreds, or maybe 35 permanent jobs, but jobs and spills? What could possibly go wrong? Why, ExxonMobil just won the Green Cross for safety medal. Never mind the spill in Arkansas, or the spill in the Yellowstone River, or that spill in the Kalamazoo River, or the spill in Minnesota, or the spill in, well, those don't matter. What matters is, I'm Tar Sands Timmy, and I need a pipeline. Your friend to the north needs to get south. Anchors away! Oh man, I love Mark Fiore. Oh, I do too. Those things, they make such great fun. 35 Absolutely. permanent jobs. Yeah, 35 permanent jobs. But if we build a refinery, 200,000 related union jobs. Wow. But, of course, we need to build a pipeline because it's good for the economy. Yes, mm -hmm. it's good for China's economy. Yeah, it's good for the Koch brother economy. Mm -hmm. Not so good for us. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? What are we doing here, well, brother? Well, the people that are building the pipeline have been accused of, oh, I don't know, saving a few costs here and there. No. Say no. it's not so. No way. They're not. They're not. It's. It's not like you know, uh, 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 the Texas coast where they blew up because of cutting corners. Oh no, 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 nothing like that. Because there's not enough profit margin. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? <laughs> okay, let's get into it as we do it. We Pick make sure you get informed about the real facts. We're going to be covering a lot of stuff. Hang on, check this comments. out. CBC News has learned the National Energy Board is taking a closer look at TransCanada, a whistleblower has produced convincing evidence that TransCanada hasn't always been following the rules, inspecting its pipelines. Tonight, that whistleblower is speaking on camera and only to CBC News. Here's our senior investigative correspondent, Diana Swain. It was someone working inside TransCanada's headquarters in Calgary who blew the whistle, telling Canada's energy regulator that inspections on some new pipelines weren't being done properly. If those pipes rupture, it could lead to spills or even explosions. Now, the National Energy Board has revealed that after investigating TransCanada, it found many of the allegations of regulatory non-compliance identified by the complainant were verified by TransCanada's internal audit. The whistleblower is Evan Vokes. Until earlier this year, a metallurgical engineer who spent five years at TransCanada. Here's the issue. 
TransCanada operates the pipelines, but it contracts out the construction. To make sure the work is done properly, TransCanada is supposed to hire the inspector. But that can slow the schedule and inflate the budget. Instead, TransCanada was sometimes letting the contractor hire its own inspector, a clear conflict of interest, which is why the NEB forbids it. CBC News has learned this isn't something that happened just once. We found five examples over the past 10 years where someone in the company thought it wasn't TransCanada's job to hire the inspector. In fact, just last year, a company employee told to hire an independent inspector asked in an email, is this a new change? The company declined our request for an interview, but in an email said any potential problems were caught through routine quality control processes well before any facilities went into service and says it now hires these inspectors directly. The NEB says it doesn't believe there's an immediate threat to safety. Still, it's launched its own audit of TransCanada's inspection practices. So, of course, they're cutting corners again. Of course, you know, but TransCanada, trust us. <laughs> well, they have the word Canada in there. Yeah, of course, in Canada. I think they're trading on the name. I know, but down in Texas, Canada does not have a good rep, okay, because they know what we're doing, and they realize that these pipelines leak all the time. Exactly. Okay, and if you look at the long-term health effects, just look at Arkansas. Exactly. Well, look at what's going on in Athabasca. Oh, I know. It's horrendous. You know, and you, you know what? All the Indian bands that live downstream from the tar sands have a thousand percent more cancer now wow but then the government turns around and says well we don't have studies saying and they're finding mutant fish yes okay i mean it's like it's worse than the simpsons mm -hmm. okay oh yeah you know and you're looking at these guys going you know what future are you planning okay uh, i Seriously. think they're planning a scorched earth future yes and mm -hmm. corporate cities in dubai mm -hmm. if you ever want a real wake-up call see the corporate cities that they have around dubai that are just for oil industry executives and their families oh. talking about being cut off eh? wow we've got a story right here 199 conditions yes yes want to run it okay <laughs> It hasn't even been given the go-ahead, but the cost of the proposed Northern Gateway pipeline is already rising. A federal panel has laid out almost 200 conditions which would have to be met before the project could proceed. Among them, almost a billion dollars in insurance costs to cover a catastrophic oil spill. Enbridge, the company behind the project, must also inspect the pipeline every two years. The panel's stressing there is still no decision on the pipeline. With more on the conditions and what's ahead for Northern Gateway, we're joined now by the CBC's Alana Baker in Calgary. So, Alana, tell us more about the key conditions that this panel's come up with. Well, there are four main areas of concern that the conditions cover. Now, first, the pipeline must have a financial plan for anything that goes wrong during construction or operation. And as part of that plan, $950 million is to be set aside for things like spill cleanup and environmental remediation. Now, second, the project has to take many steps to prevent things from going wrong in the first place. That means things like having very specific coatings on the pipeline itself, plus built-in protections at the port in Kitimat. Included in that is a 24-hour emergency response plan and a huge secondary containment area at the terminal. Now, third, there would also be steps taken to address the socioeconomic impacts of the project, and that includes having plans for Aboriginal and local consultation and employment, and it could also mean restrictions on hiring temporary foreign workers for the construction. Mm. And fourth, the project must have plans to minimize the impact on plants and animals along the entire stretch of the pipeline. Speed limits for tankers at the port in Kitimat are being recommended. Plus, the panel saying they'd like to see research into the impact of heavy oil spills on aquatic plants and animals. Alana Baker in Calgary. So isn't it interesting that the plants and animals were the fourth? I know. That was interesting, in yeah. Okay, and insurance to clean up. Okay, that that's kind of crazy. Like, they can buy their way out of an oil spill. Exactly. You know, our future generations are at risk right now. It's, you know, asinine statements like that saying that we can buy our way out of our mess. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> I mean, take a look at Texas right now. 
Okay, they're going through it. But it looks like they may have some problems pushing the Northern Gateway Pipeline through. <laughs> yeah, you think? Just a few. <laughs> so, of course, our our Environment Minister, our Minister of Resources, Joe Oliver, they're out there shilling like crazy for the Keystone XL. Oh. Well, and isn't worth Canada's investment to yeah. be sending these people down to America to but, sell this idea? Uh, yeah. Even though we know how bad it is in the pipes? <laughs> I know. I get, you know, our own poli- Well. The, you be the judge. Let's run this. Here's Peter Ketz. <laughs> Last week, an Exxon Mobil pipeline burst, spilling out thousands of barrels of crude oil into Mayflower, Arkansas, damaging homes, lands, waters, and wildlife. 22 homes were evacuated as a result of the rupture. Though Exxon Mobil is currently working on cleaning up the spill and has publicly stated that it will pay for all cleanup costs, experts say oil companies have made promises like this before in the past and have been slow in carrying them out if they carried them out at all. In a statement to Press TV, ExxonMobil said it is, quote, paying for the cleanup and will honor all valid claims, and further states that the cause of the spill is under investigation. Additional concerns include health effects on the residents of the neighborhoods in which the oil spilled. Also, the issue of legal accountability has been raised. Due to a 1980 law, oil companies do not have to pay taxes to clean up tar sands oil as it is not technically classified as oil. To be under the IRS laws, they're not judged to be oil. They're considered chemically different. And what that means is that companies that are importing and transporting tar sands don't have to pay into our national oil spill liability fund. This corrosive oil is the same kind that will be transported in the controversial Keystone XL pipeline, which cuts through the United States sparking fears over the damage it might do should it also burst. The Keystone Pipeline is nine times the size of the pipeline which ruptured in Arkansas. Momentum against the Keystone Pipeline has been building. Last month, tens of thousands of protesters descended on Washington to demand President Obama stop the pipeline's construction. Marge on Oth- Okay, so uh, general head shaking going on. Isn't it nice to see mm-hmm. our politicians working so hard for the oil industry? I know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, Harper and the conservatives have one plan, and that's sell out. Yeah, that extra yeah. 10 mil sitting in the bank, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, because, you know, people aren't going hungry. And there's no homeless in Canada. No, there's no homeless. There's the oil. Oh, that's no, it. no. I, we know we we don't need to cut back our soldiers' danger pay. <laughs> Oh, wait, they were considering that, weren't oh, they? Oh, wait, wait, that's the truth. Uh, let's come back. We're going to run a couple more stories on oil uh, right next because I want to fit these ones in. There's one from the GOP that's going to kill you. Hang in there. I'm Darren Howard. I'm Robert Nisbet. And I'm Monica Salmar. We're going to be right back. Some think green energy is the answer. Yet this green power comes at a terrible price. Every year, hundreds of thousands are horribly burned by the sun's rays. And with every spring, wind brings sickness and fever to millions. From a deadly ball of hydrogen burning dangerously hot at one trillion degrees to the airborne fever delivery system called wind, green energy is far from safe. Yet there is a better way. It's called Clean Coal. (laughs) Hi there, I'm Coal McLean, here to show you coal is clean. Thanks to our super smart panel of coalologists, we now know coal is clean. Just look under this carbon scanning clean scopic scope and you'll see why. There are hundreds of kajillions of desodification molecules formed into subterranean clean colonies of coalicious goodness which means dirty is clean. As the tiny clean colonies go about their appointed chores, like scrubbing soot, vacuuming the colony, and planting tiny bubble gum gardens, the energy of the clean colonies is then transferred to the desodification molecules on the surface of the coal, where our clean coal technology captures energy for you. Now that you know the science that proves coal is clean, next time I'll tell you all about what you can do with clean coal. Until then, just remember, coal is clean. See you soon. <coughs> see you. S- <coughs> see-, <coughs> see you soon.